A very good evening to you. Thanks very much for coming to this APM webinar tonight about Agile project management. Uh, my name is Casper Bartington and I'm APM's Head of Volunteer and Education Engagement and I'm delighted to join our special guest today, Dr. Sirkan Chalen from University of Southampton, Professor Helen Sharp from the OU um, and Adrian Pine from Pine Consulting. And what we're going to do tonight is, is not just talk at you, which is great news, um, we'll do a little introduction um, about the session. Each panelist will spend a few minutes talking about their views, um, but the, the lion's share of the event is really going to be um, for you to ask questions and get involved. So this is one of a series of webinars that APM is organising with our Midlands branch about key issues um, that universities in the region wanted us to talk about, and Agile is the first one. So I'm delighted to be joined by Andy Baber, um, who works with the APM Midlands branch, and Andy's going to welcome you with some questions um, before handing over to the panel. So uh, enjoy this session, and uh, Andy, over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Casper, and um, welcome everybody. On behalf of the uh, Midlands APM branch subcommittee, um, Higher Education Institute. So yeah, once again, welcome. Um, we've uh, managed to um, uh, obtain three illustrious speakers uh, for this virtual webinar or virtual panel. Uh, this, the title of this uh, eight uh, agile uh, project management. Casper uh, suggested we've got three uh, illustrious speakers. Uh, Zirkum Sealand from uh, University of Southampton. Um, he's a director of Center of Applied Science in Project Management. Also a very published author, uh, multiple uh, multiple um, uh, books and uh, publications. We have uh, Professor Helen Sharp of, of the Open University. Uh, professor is a, a, a Helen is a professor of software engineering at the Open University. Um, multidiscipline research project uh, applier also. Uh, finally, but not least, we have uh, Mr. Adrian Pine, Pine Consulting, and uh, he's, a, he's a transformation program specialist, e-commerce, finance, mining, etc. So you can agree, a diverse panel. Um, so back to the Slido, we have a, a couple of opening questions and one final question. Um, we would like to ask, um, what term do you feel best describes agile to you but firstly we would like to understand where you you come from which sector you you would say you represent as of today um so that that would be our first um, slider question what term best describes you okay and that can be that that's uh, happening behind the scenes the second question as we go through this your answers might vary and might uh, or might evolve um we would like to ask a question as to what Agile means to you. And that could be anything from what you've read, from what you've, you've, you've dealt with, uh, and what you believe it should mean. So we would welcome uh, responses on those two uh, Slido questions. So without further ado, um, enough from myself, I would like to introduce you to our, our first, uh, first speaker, uh, Dr. Zirkam from the uh, University of uh, Southampton. Uh, would you like to take the stage? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the title of my very short, I think, three-minute presentation or discussion is um, is titled "Who's the Master of Agile Project Management?" So I'm deliberately making a few uh, strong statements to trigger your thoughts, and you're of course allowed to challenge me um, later on during the question and answer session. I will look at project management from a knowledge-based view of the firm, uh, which means I'm putting project management into the context of a competitive strategy. I believe uh, that companies are set out to survive, compete or lead. I also believe that project management is primarily used to achieve the strategic aim of surviving, competing or, or leading. Um, in its simplest form, there's a context a company operates in. The company has a continuous mission to attain some form of value and strives for some form of competitive advantage, um, or at least it wants to survive or compete. Uh, the company has an, an approach to undertake activities, uh, which I think should be flexible and always linked to the environment and particularly the outputs the company um, is trying to achieve. Now, most of Agile project management methodologies have been pioneered, if you like, from the IT sector. I always say everybody else is trying to play catch up. 
Um, and it's not surprising that, I mean, even Prince Two has been pioneers um, or has its origin from um, the IT department or was tackling problems within the IT department um, within the government. So over time, more and more companies managed to adopt Prince2 and different industries adopt uh, and managed to adopt Prince2. However, having a methodology with the belief system from one particular sector has its challenges. On top of that, a particular methodology used for all projects um, has its own challenges as well. It makes it rather rigid. I always say methodologies need to allow for flow, needs to stay flexible. Uh, I do believe that agile project management is an evolutionary development activity, which in its core has some iterative and incremental approach. I also know that not everybody agrees. However, I also believe that many, many companies are missing a trick. If you as a company or as a practitioner buy into one specific methodology, for example, Scrum, and you're trying to shoehorn every project into one belief system, then I would question the value of such approach. Even worse, when you operate outside IT and you're adopting a lightweight agile methodology such as Scrum, um, you are trying to adopt a belief system of activities and approaches that may have not even originated from your environment. If your experience, therefore, is, oh, it's very hard and, and we really tried, but we couldn't um, deliver anything meaningful within a two-week sprint or time box, then my question would be, um, who sets the idea of, of the time box being two weeks? You know? And if your conclusion is agile project management doesn't work, then I will go back to that question and say, hold on a second, what, what really is agile project management? Um, yes, you're using some techniques and there are some rules based on a particular sector for those techniques, but um, you are in a completely different sector. So maybe there are different rules for you. So the question is who set the belief system um, you're adopting? In case you were wondering, why I have some animals there in my, in my particular slides. I do believe that Mother Nature is using Agile PM and really understands what evolutionary development is. I do not believe she's using a one-week sprint. Um, granted, our time horizons may be not the same, but I would say let's learn from her. So that's my little introduction, if you like, to sort of trigger some thoughts and have some discussions later. Thank you. Thank you very much, for Zerkan. Excellent. Without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Professor Helen Sharp, Open University. Thank you, Helen. Hi. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, one thing um, which I've found as I've worked with uh, Agile practitioners over the last sort of, um, oh, I don't know, possibly even two decades, um, is that Agile is a wonderful thing to pick up and people really love it. Um, but there's always a but. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to do in my sort of three minute piece is to give you a, a bit of a flavor of the kinds of um, challenges and balances that practitioners are telling us they have to, to, to cope with when they, when they pick up Agile, as they work with Agile, whether that's Agile project management uh, or indeed um, from the team's point of view um, in, in IT and software engineering. As my introduction said, I'm a professor of software engineering, so I'm not an, uh, an Agile project manager practitioner. Uh, I do teach Agile project management, but I have a slightly different perspective because I'm coming from that software engineering um, domain. But to me, what, what does Agile mean? Um, so this is, this, is, this is my own view. This is not picked up on any other people's um, thoughts uh, except the own research, my own research. So I think it's a disciplined approach. Um, it, discipline is really important. Um, it supports flexibility, so it's also important to have that flexibility to be able to change. Um, but it also uses the team's experience and expertise to the full. So the idea is that people are given the chance to make the decisions that are appropriate for them to be making within the team context. And I believe that sort of encapsulates what I've seen, as I say, what I've seen with practitioners handling, um, handling, handling Agile over the last uh, couple of decades. The kinds of challenges um, that I think they've faced, I've picked out just three, um, and these are challenges which are about balancing, because I also think Agile is very much about balancing things. So um, 
certainly what we want to do is to support the team in making the decisions that they're able to make so you need to empower teams but you also have to balance that against higher level goals so the team and individual members in the team don't need to know a lot of detail about what is happening at the higher level kinds of goals they need to be getting on and doing their own jobs they don't want to particularly engage too much with that however there is an important aspect of knowing the holistic view of the, of the project and where the project is going. And the project manager, I believe, is someone who has to balance that uh, empowerment and also allowing uh, uh, getting the team to follow the higher level goals. Another balance is what things you want to keep stable and what you need to allow to change within the project as time goes on goes on if you're changing everything all the time then that can make life very complicated and it can become very confusing so what you keep stable and what you allow to to change and the third one i just wanted to mention today is um to do again with the balance uh, when are you managing and when you're trying to sort of uh, in a sense tell people what to do so, so so you know there's an element of command and control but when you're managing and when you're leading um there's leadership and facilitation, and they are also extremely important things within an agile kind of context. Um, and I think actually having a, a good agile leader is key for agile to work in any kind of situations. The word cloud I've got on the right hand side there um, is actually a word cloud I've developed from the data we collected uh, when we when we were investigating these these challenges. So as I said, we we've spent time with practitioners um, trying to understand. Uh, what are the challenges they face with Agile? And I thought it was quite interesting. Um, obviously, the, the smaller the smaller words have been taken out, but you've got things in there like balance, you've got organising, managing, uh, you've got the process, uh, you've got business and customers. There was quite a lot of interesting um, data that came up over the last, let's say, about five years. We, we've been um, polling different organisations and different teams to understand what are the challenges you're facing. And I thought it was quite interesting just to put that up there for you to have a look at some of the words that, uh, that come up when we're talking about um, challenges in Agile. Um, and some of the things I thought it would be interesting for you to think about, um, uh, to sort of think in terms of what we might talk about in the Q&A section. Um, so uh, the, every, project management is everybody's responsibility in, in Agile. That's, that's one perspective I've heard people say. So, so everybody should be concerned about project management to some degree. And if that's the case, what does the project manager do? Um, that's the first question I thought you might find interesting to, to, to ponder on. Um, and the second thing, um, it sounds a little bit academic, but are we talking about agile project management or managing agile projects? And is there a difference? Um, and I, again, I find it quite interesting asking people that question. It just makes you stop and think about what are we actually trying to achieve? So they're my suggestions for things that might just, just think you start you thinking and, and asking questions when it comes around to it. Um, and I just want to say I'm, I'm part of the Agile Research Network. You can see there's that thing in the, in the, the bottom there and on the right hand side is our, is our website. And there's quite a lot of research in this kind of area that is published and is available through the, the website there for you to have a look if you want to know more about it. But obviously ask me questions. So I will hand over now and uh, uh, look forward to hearing your questions afterwards. Thank you very much, Helen. Um, so as I mentioned um, at the start, there is a Slido. And some of what Helen was uh, was was discussing about key words, key thoughts on on agile, that is one of the slido questions. So yeah, if we can make your way to the slido, that would really help us in augment what uh, what Helen and Sirkin has been saying. And um, to finish the, uh, the 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 speakers for this evening, we have a uh, Mr. Adrian Pye. Um, so Adrian, it's all down to you, sir. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Um, so I'm coming at this from a practitioner, uh, mostly running or rescuing um, transformational programs and projects for over the past about 30 years. Yes, I'm, I'm very old, um, but I'm still learning. Uh, and I found myself getting more and more with my clients uh, into uh, helping them deal with this strange thing called Agile over the last 10 years or so. So I thought I would actually pose a little question here, and or question or statement to it saying, there's no such thing actually as agile project management. Because uh, kind of when I started out reading a lot of stuff seven or eight years ago, a lot of people were writing papers, writing books, basically saying, we've invented this new project management. 
It's different from anything there's ever been before. There's totally clear blue water, and it's brilliant. Please buy my book um, uh, or buy my consultancy time and stuff. And uh, that's complete rubbish. Um, Agile project management does all the same stuff uh, that you'll find in any project management uh, method. Um, there's all the hards, uh, I've used the terms hard and soft, so soft is sort of people-oriented stuff, and hard is things like planning, risk management, uh, change control, uh, financial management, all those reporting, all those lovely things. Uh, you do that, as well as all the team building, leadership, and, and, and everything else. It's just differently. I think it's brilliantly uh, summed up by some years ago by a guy called Steve Messenger, who used to be the chair of um, what was then called the Agile Business Consortium. Um, uh, sorry, yes, it's now called the Agile Business Consortium. Uh, it's called something a little different uh, a few years ago. Uh, they're one of the organizations actually whose publications have moved agile project and program and portfolio management beyond purely the world of, of IT, or at least they've started started to. Um, unlike a lot of the other uh, uh, publications, I would say like um, uh, Agile Prints 2, which still very much focuses on a lot of things. In fact, the Helen was talking about uh, the project management of Agile projects. So in other words, IT stuff, um, uh, delivery uh, done using Scrum and SAFE and stuff like that, which are IT development methods, not project management methods. And therein is one of the biggest, uh, single most expensive mistakes that people make about using uh, Agile in project management. But okay, so if it's just done differently, and what Steve Messenger said is Agile is a state of mind. So it's all the same stuff, you just do it differently. And a lot of it is behavioral. And if I can have the uh, the next click, please, I'll start to show you what I mean. I'll use leadership here as one as one uh, difference. So uh, for many, many years in my career as a project manager, program manager, uh, I was I exhibited typical control freak behaviors. I liked to be in control of everything. I liked to have my finger on every pulse or in every pie. Um, which was quite often very, very stressful. Um, and I worked in environments where there wasn't a whole lot of trust, uh, even though there were lots of really good people who were working uh, with me on those uh, very large and complex and expensive projects and, and indeed uh, uh, programs. Um, but that's, that's, if you like, a traditional project leadership uh, approach. Not everyone's like that, clearly. Uh, but it was a very common behavior, and you'll still find that in many industries, not least construction and some areas of engineering um, uh, where control freakery, uh, being, uh, being closely in control of the detail and people uh, is important. So next click, please. Agile is different. Um, I, I liken agile leadership to a parent teaching a child to ride a bike. And here we have uh, a father who's either just taken his hand off or is just about to take his hand off the saddle as his child takes uh, with stabilizers off the bike, goes unsteadily cycling on their own away. Now, what, an, what, that, what no dad is going to do is simply stand there and watch the son or daughter pedal off into the distance, maybe uh, colliding with a thorny bush or a lamppost or a, or a dog that's rushing a, a through the park as well. What they are actually doing is they're still keeping their hands off, but they're probably trotting up behind and keeping in touch, ready to intervene if they're asked to or if they need to. And that, I think, is a brilliant evocation of what an agile leader is like. They're not hands off, out of control completely. They're not saying, okay, you folk know what you're doing, go away and do it and I don't care. They are retaining enough control, they're in touch enough to be able to exercise uh, their own control if they feel they need to. Otherwise, they let the team get on and do what they're supposed to be good at doing. So that's just one way in which being agile is different from, shall we say, more traditional project management approaches.
but they're still reporting, they're still change control, all the formal stuff is still done. The other thing I guess is the light touch to only do as much management as perhaps you need to do. So next click please. And here we have, well, it's a picture of lots of people really, but uh, I don't know whether chefs are project managers, but I quite like this picture anyway. What I, my point here is that great professionals I have found, great professional project managers are actually agile, whether they realize it or not. I don't know whether any of you, any of you have ever heard the, the, the old story uh, about the bumblebee, which is not supposed to be able to fly. I think it was an aerodynamicist some decades ago did some calculations to show that according to the energy output and area of wing, a bumblebee can't fly this. But the bumblebee being completely ignorant of physics and aerodynamics keeps flying nonetheless. And this is true with a lot of really great project and program managers and other professionals. Uh, they, they actually exhibit agile behaviors. Few project managers do more management than they need to. Uh, so they optimize what they do. Uh, they prefer, a lot of project managers prefer to um, you know, uh, build teams that are going to go away and be great delivery teams. And in other words, there's an element of trust in that. You know, go away, get on, be in, properly empowered and do what you're supposed to be able to do. That's agile behavior. Okay, so if we turn that around, next click please, and we think slightly out of the box, what you could say that if you want to build great professionals, you want to have um, uh, project managers, program managers, et cetera, who can succeed, then what perhaps an organization should do, and this is what I've spent the last mostly 10 years doing, is helping organizations build great project management capabilities. And they've all been agile. Whether we've called them agile or not, uh, they have all ended up being uh, looking just like something you would recognize as being an agile capability. And as a result of which, we've been able to build and develop great professionals. So for any of you who may be uh, who are students uh, moving into the future, uh, if you want, if you're going to move into the world of projects and you want to become a great professional, then look to see what that looks like in terms of being agile. And when you can exhibit those behaviors, uh, then you're likely to be a great professional. And at the end of the day, it's actually people who succeed in projects. Um, that's, that's basically it. And I think agile people succeed the most. That's all for me. Wonderful. Thank you very much, um, Adrian. Uh, and obviously, thank you again to uh, Zirkum and Helen. Um, we're now at the point uh, in proceedings where we can open it up to those those in attendance. The Slido is still there and available for you. Looks like we've had 39 uh, responses to our What is Agile? Um, so there's some singular words that have been presented, some very useful stuff. So thank you very much for that. Um, so I'd like to uh, throw out my first question. And uh, Sirkam, you've, you've had a little bit more time to rest your voice. So I would like to pose this question to yourself if possible um, and I won't I won't divulge you where the question came from for confidentiality reasons but the question goes like this what term would you use an, as an alternative to waterfall project management methodology Prince 2 has been for decades dubbed as waterfall project management methodology which is not the case it can be tailored to suit any project specific environment I'm saying this as both a qualified Prince 2 and a Prince 2 Agile practitioner. So um, yeah, quite a, quite a, I would say that's that's written with some emotion there, Azurkan. Do you have any thoughts, any feedback for, for the questioner there? I, uh, I would still put um, Prince 2 into a um, traditional approach. So I would classify that as a, as a traditional approach. Um, I, I, I do agree that this has evolved from, from a typical waterfall methodology, um, especially with sort of the, if you like, the, the, skate, uh, the, the, the stage gates, gates you have um, in, in the projects, um, in Prince 2 projects. So um, yeah, I, I would put it in the category of, of, of traditional, um, but I wouldn't necessarily call it waterfall, probably originated from 
from waterfall ideas. That's how I would answer that particular question. Excellent. Yeah, very good. Okay. Um, I'm seeing nods from both Helen and Adrian, so I think you've uh, any 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 suggested added added additions to that at all, Helen? Well, I was just I was just thinking. I mean, um, I, I don't fully understand the question as to why. I mean, why why does it need to be um, labelled that way at all? I mean, if if it needs to change its image, um, should it change its name? Um, so I so I mean, it's uh, sometimes you just have to explain to people that things have evolved and things have changed. And it has done a good job, as I understand it. Prince Two has done a very good job of exactly doing that and taking on board, you know, what is happening out there in the world and the fact that agile is is now um, more prevalent. So, um, so I don't, I, I don't quite understand why, why, why it's an issue. Can't it just explain itself? Um, <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I just don't, I don't quite get it. So maybe that's just me. Yeah, maybe you're stereotyping. It's, it, yeah, it's certainly true that Prince Two for years has been uh, criticised as being bureaucratic frankly only by people who don't understand it and don't know how to use and adapt it. Uh, I, I know myself and loads of other professionals who have adapted it. Uh, again, you know, we didn't call it lean or agile or anything, but we just said, well, what do we need to do in this organizational context or indeed for this individual project? And you just do what you, what you, need, what you need, need to do. And again, that come back, that's, that's what great professional do, professionals do. They adapt methods. Um, and and uh, yeah, to say that it's a waterfall method is patently wrong. I, I prefer to divorce any kind of life cycle from the method uh, because it's a question of what life cycle is needed in a project or indeed in a program where you may have multiple life cycles. They've frankly got precious little to do with the project or program management methodology. They've got everything to do with the delivery methodologies, whether it's an IT delivery or whether it's uh, in construction, the IR, RI, RIBA um, um, uh, delivery method, or an engineering one, or whatever it happens to come from. That's the delivery method, not the project management method. And huge confusion there. Perfect, excellent. So that's three great responses from, from all of you there. I, I like if the first question provoking uh, some, some great responses. Um, Adrian, can, you, can I continue with yourself then with the next question? Um, it's been kindly posted. Um, okay, it's an interesting one. Where and uh, which industry specifically should I be considering which apply the best agile methodologies? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, actually, for the last year or so, I've been doing quite a lot of research um, into well, research, probably with the two academics present, is is I think far too strong a word. I've been looking at uh, different industries that have been seeing whether they could define their agile approaches. And I was very surprised to, to actually find that there is one in construction. And loads of people have said to me, you can't possibly do agile construction. Um, you can't, um, but nonetheless, there is an agile construction um, project management method. Um, and uh, I know from my own experience that uh, I've even seen nuclear engineering uh, projects done agile, believe it or not. Um, so I, th I think the only way I can answer this question is to say potentially agile project management and poor program management and everything else can be applied anywhere if it's, if it's A, appropriate, and B, if the organization culture um, supports it. And that second one is a really, really big if because Agile, as it comes back to the state of mind thing, Agile requires collaborative behaviors, it requires organizations to delegate, truly empower programs and projects, and many organizations are highly centralized and simply will not um, culturally support Agile working. And that's, that's the biggest single uh, barrier. Um, to, to doing Agile working. Otherwise, I, I truly believe that potentially you can apply Agile project management to any sector um, you know, where, where it is appropriate to do so. Any thoughts, um, Alan, second? Uh, yeah, I've, 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 I've got a, a couple of thoughts. I mean, I haven't got the same uh, breadth of uh, experience in different different uh, sectors um, as Adrian was was just talking, but but we have I mean more and more um, um, 
as, as we were saying, I mean, more and more areas are picking up this kind of agile approach. Or indeed, actually, I'm saying that, I mean, flexibility and, and agility has been around an awfully long time, not just in IT. Um, and we didn't know we were going to agree on this, but I agree with Adrian that, you know, there are people who have been applying these things. Uh, they just weren't called agile. So anyway, so have been around a, a long time. But what I was going to say is um, one of the challenges I identified was to do with what you keep stable and what you change. And this is something that people find a challenge and it varies depending on where the particular project sits. And I'm not talking about software here. As I say, we, we have looked at, we've looked at charities, we've looked at local government, we've looked at university sectors, we've looked at across a, and, and indeed uh, a, a, a dabbled my toe in construction. But I, but I wasn't too comfortable with the construction stuff, so I didn't actually go too far down that. But, but yeah, you know, there are there are obviously different uh, different sectors where this is being applied, and I think working out what you can change, what's sensible to change in the confines of the particular project and particular sector is a key a key element of of getting the balance right. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, I would like to add um, to that as well. I think the in terms of industries. Um, if I remember correctly, when, when, for example, because we talked about Prince 2 before, when Prince 2 um, was first introduced and the IT sector was, was very click, quick in sort of starting to implement ideas of, of, of Prince 2, others said, oh, you know, we can't really, um, it doesn't really work for us. And it took some maturity of, of companies and some understanding of, of what um, a, a methodology um, means before before it could be implemented, and I think we're getting um, into the same same era now with, with agile project management as well. There's still a lot of confusion of um, what some of the techniques mean and and how they link to each other, and and, and the breadth of, of of knowledge or the depth of knowledge is 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 just sort of happening right now. So everybody, it's, it's, it's become a buzzword, everybody's talking about this, and I think companies are still trying to figure out how to use Agile um, and Agile project management ideas and approaches um, within, their, within their projects. So I think um, in terms of industry, I wouldn't like to limit it to any industry. I would like to open up as long as, you know, regulatory restrictions and, um, and common sense allows, allows you to use it. Oh, very good, very good. I'm not sure, uh, Adrian, one of the questions that came in that, that, that probably you answered without knowing was, um, can our job PM be applied easily to construction projects? So, uh, yeah, excellent. And that was asked before you even you even started speaking. So I think we've, uh, oh, we've answered I'm that so question. Good. We've answered that question. So excellent. Well done. Um, so next question, um, uh, I think, is Helen. Could you, could you start fielding this one, if possible? Um, and the question goes, uh, what is it about Agile PM that was not a feature of good PM for many years before the Agile Manifesto? So, okay, some, some good words there. I think we get what they mean. Um, so, yeah, Helen, what's your thoughts on, the, on that question? So, so what was the aspects of, of project management before the Agile Manifesto came along? What yeah. do you mean that, that we're Agile? Was that the...? Yes, so, so before it was called Agile, before we all, yeah, yeah. Well, um, wow. Um, well, I think I think I think that's actually quite difficult to to answer in some respects because um, it's it's about good project management and good project management is about doing what's appropriate in the context where you are working um, and I think that's that's actually I mean what Agile is trying to do is to make sure that you get the best of the output whatever the output happens to be is the best that you can do in the context that you're working um, and the trouble with sort of saying oh we're just going to go this way and, and never change anything. And plan everything up front uh, is that you end up with something which isn't quite right because circumstances have changed and and everything's sort of moved on. So I think uh, I think what what people did do, what they were trying to do, was to do the best thing they could, pick up the right kinds of techniques, um, right kinds of of modelling or whatever they were doing at the time that suited the problem. Um, and I think that's that's really what's what's part of. Um, project management before it was called Agile, before the Agile Manifesto. I mean, remember the Agile Manifesto was just a, well, not just, sorry, it, it got to a point where people said, okay, we need to write this stuff down. We've been doing it for a while. We need to write it down. Um, and um, the Agile Business Consortium, Adrian, you mentioned them earlier on, they were called DSDM before, um, and we work with them a lot. I mean, there are if anyone looks at our website, you'll see that they're actually one of our funders. So I know them quite sort of quite well. 
and, and I mean they were around long before the Agile Manifesto was written written down. So I mean these things were actually happening before. So so as I said, I think that there's quite a lot of things, but it's it's about using the right thing, right tools, techniques, right situation for uh, the project in hand. Is what I, they're my thoughts. Great, yeah, that, that to re, to emphasise and to reiterate a lot of what you were talking about before. Yeah, like that. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Any thoughts from Circum and Adrian on that one? Um, just like to add, if you one thing I kind of battled against in years was the fact that probably until mm, ten years ago, certainly fifteen years ago, the written down best practice in the likes of Prince Two, PMI, even APM Bock um, were there, there wasn't much people stuff in there. So there wasn't much about leadership, teams, uh, stakeholder management and communications. It was very much the hard, what I refer to earlier as the hard stuff. So lots and lots of stuff in there about how do you plan a project, how do you financially control it, change control, all of that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. And it was organizations actually like APM, who with their developing body of knowledge, really started introducing and recognizing the importance of, uh, of leadership, professionalism, team building, uh, empowering people, and again, stakeholder management and communications, uh, that, that kind of stuff. And so the best practice has changed. And of course, as that has changed, people have realized, well, actually, we've been doing it. It's exactly what Helen said. Oh my God, we're agreeing with each other again. Um, you know, we've been doing it for years, but suddenly it gets written down. People are, re are realizing that it's not a brilliant plan that delivers a project, it's a person or people who team who deliver a, a successful project. Yeah, very good. Excellent. Um, so can you, gonna, you want, do you want to augment that at all? Or we, we have no, I think I agree with what has been said now, and Adrian, to, um, to, to sort of um, just follow on that, in the end, those management method or those project management methodologies are based on on common sense you know and, and good practice normally comes out from common sense mm. so so um so yeah we've been using um techniques for for a long long time before we actually understood that we were using them so because it made sense to use them the only thing i would always say is that some of the common sense that works really well for one particular industry that doesn't necessarily mean that it can be applied exactly the same for, for the other industry. So what we need to do is, is take it a step further and mature it even more to really understand different contexts and different environments to, to deliver successful projects. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, excellent. Great. Some, some great responses there. I'm hoping the, the person that raised that question is happy with that. I, I certainly am. Thank you. Um, so a couple of questions have come in, uh, to, I would argue, from uh, new to project management has been augmented by that. So, Sirkin, can you pick this one up for me to start with and run with it? Uh, for someone who is brand new to project management, what's the best approach to gaining a wide range of exposure and experience that are different methodologies? So not necessarily a specific agile question, but I suppose across the patch or across the board, what, how would you answer that one? Exposure in terms of practical exposure or exposure, or yeah, I suggest to it, yeah, practice, yeah, absolutely, well. yeah, managing the methodologies and yeah, absolutely, yeah. I think the the best way is always to uh, get stuck into it, isn't it? Yeah. So whenever uh, somebody you know who just joined a particular company um, see, sees the project, they should try and and, and be involved. Uh, maybe in a, in a supporting capacity to to see what's what's happening and, and, and trying to um, get a feel for it really, um, and also making sure that um, they read around different methodologies. You know, I I always yeah. um, I know a lot of companies who, as I said before, are trying to shoehorn one particular belief system, and, and they're saying our projects are always done like this, and and I feel we need to sort of move away from that. And um, and really understand different methodologies and different ways of, of and different approaches of doing something. Um, so I would say yes, get stuck into it, but but read around as well. And uh, sometimes it's a good idea to um, to do a few different short courses, but not necessarily on the same methodology. Gotcha. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, any quick thoughts on that from Adrian and Helen or? 
you, you happy with that? Well, can I just guess if I, if I can just add, I mean, one of the first collaborators I worked with and when I was started to look more at the project management stuff and away from the software engineering per se, um, he, he, this the guy in charge of the company said basically what Zirkan's just said is that, you know, we use whatever methods we need, we need to use for the project. Um, and I don't know that there are many companies that are out there that are like that. But I think one of the things I'd say is if you want to try and get that kind of experience, try and get into employment or get into working with a company that has that kind of view. So, I mean, I, th I think of management consultants, but I actually don't know an awful lot about them. So I'm gonna, they, that may be a good thing, may not be a good thing. Um, but but a, you want a company that doesn't say, here we are, we're going to do this. We're always going to use prints or we're always going to use DSDM or we're always going to use whatever. But but they use the right, whatever is appropriate. Mm. So if you can you can sort of like sound people out, sound yeah. out companies, um, that's a good way to do it, I would suggest. Okay. Yeah. So here's a question to, to add to that then, Helen, on a similar path. So there's a question coming in. How can a HE institution with a with a bureaucratic decision making structure adopt agile successfully? So I think that's kind of that's quite linked quite nicely to how, how this how it is applied. And, and I know you're from a HE institute, so yeah. Is that a fair question to ask? <laughs> I am, and from a very bureaucratic one as well. So, that's <laughs> okay. really, that question is extremely close to my heart. <laughs> okay, um, perfect. So, so how do you do it? Okay, um, I think how you do it is you start bottom up. Now, um, well, you start you start bottom up, and you've got to have top down as well to a degree. However, um, there is a university that I know quite well that did try, has tried, is trying to do agile. Um, and I think uh, it's important, you know, we, whenever I'm, I'm talking in the presence of a transformation expert, so I need to be careful here. But I think it's important to to have the leaders, uh, the leadership, the higher higher level management or whatever of the organisation. So in our case, it's um, it's the pro vice chancellors and and deans and people like that. Um, they do need to be supportive of um, of agile. Um, as, sorry, as well as the administrative people. It's not just the academic side, obviously, it's the administrative side as well. Um, but I think actually, um, certainly, yeah, I, I think actually if you can get people on the ground to try it out. So Agile has been used. Um, we at the OU, we do use Agile for some of our, our course production, some of our module production. And if you'd asked somebody five years ago uh, if we were doing that, I think that would be, you know, people said, absolutely not. You know, we need all the bureaucracy that we have. Um, but but I think that they've actually found it's been very, very successful. So it's about trying out things in particular areas. Where does it work? Does it work here? Does it work there? How can we modify it so that it, yeah. it sort of supports us? So I think there are, there are ways of doing it. It's, um, it, yeah. it's trying it out. Really. I think you're absolutely right. And I, I can come in on that one. I've had experience of HE Institute management of, of programs. And um, ultimately, it seems a bit offhand and a bit flippant, but the vice chancellors, pro vice chancellors, they don't care how you get from A to B. Yeah, they don't care if it's agile or whatever it is, but so long as it's done in a you know, cost effective and an efficient way. Um, so for them, it's noise. Um, so, that, so it's all about managing their expectations really as to what as to what's applied. So, all right, good. Um, Adrian, I have a slightly uh, alternate question here for you. Um, uh, just to move the questions on a little bit. Um, question goes, <laughs> How do you align senior leadership wanting clarity on cost, time, scope, what they're going to get fairly early on for budgeting and for budgeting purposes versus agile delivery? So I suppose that's all about set, setting a business case against the, the backdrop of a delivery through agile. Okay, uh, I think I understand the question. I think the answer I'm going to give it is, is this one. Um, most and again, the, um, agile is not is not a science. So mm -hmm. agile development, or certainly not agile project management, is not a science, and it's not totally evolved. As Sirkin said, it's it's an evolving thing. But one of the key ideas around what makes an agile project approach different is how the magic triangle works, the time, cost, quality triangle. And um, one thing which is, appears to be making agile project management um, popular, believe it or not, with uh, chief financial officers is that an agile approach seeks to try and fix 
the time and the cost of a project and have the most variability around scope. Although, again, it takes a principle from the Agile Manifesto, which is the minimal, minimum viable product, and basically says that your business case says you're going to do as you're going to do as much as you can in a given time for a given cost but that as much as you can has to be a certain level of scope delivery in order to have a viable uh, value delivery and so that's 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 what is happening quite broadly now and is a reason why as i say and, and, and agile is, is is believe it or not fairly fairly popular because they quite like the I'm be flippant here the apparent predictability of fixing time and cost um, of, of course it's 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 a bit like the old adage about uh, a battle never a battle strategy never survives uh, the first in, uh, the first engagement yeah. uh, and and that's the, that's the same and projects have always been like that but nonetheless that that's that's the starting uh, uh, point of trying to fix time and cost to so have a business case that fix time and costs fix a minimum scope for delivery and then says go and deliver more than that if you possibly can um and so that's and, and that's translated from the project level to the program level and indeed even to at sort of agile approaches to port uh, to uh, port managing portfolios as well mm -hmm. and there you may be during uh, a, a year you know moving resources around to see which projects are are actually performing better to see where you can deliver greater value from a portfolio say across one or two financial years um and so, so chasing chasing value which again is at the heart of being agile sure. i hope that answers the question no absolutely yeah yeah i think so um anybody want to add, add to that I also understand that beyond budgeting is quite um, popular. Um, so that's a, a sort of an agile way of, of uh, handling finances, as I understand it. I don't know a lot about it, but I understand it's quite popular. Okay. So okay. look at beyond budgeting. Worth a good takeaway. Yeah. Thank you, Helen. Excellent. Yeah. I think gave a comprehensive uh, view on that one. I, I'd just like to um, take the opportunity quickly to go back to the previous question, if I may. Oh, sorry. Um, yes. Yeah, sure. sure. Higher, higher education, because in my previous life, I used to work within the enterprise center in the university um, before I started my academic career. So, so I can sort of put my mindset into this, this particular issue of, of, you know, higher education institution being seen as, as bureaucratic. So um, I think that the easiest way is basically by um, labeling your activities as a project, because a project on its own is a temporary organization structure. So you can try and get um, Try and sort of minimize some bureaucracy by creating your own organization structure with it within your project and um, just giving the, the information that's needed for, for senior management to, to make some decisions and, and, and help them um, to, to see where, where you're moving into um, and what you're trying to achieve. So uh, I use that in the past quite, quite frequently. Okay. Uh, and again, project management is, is perfectly suited for. For stepping a little bit outside normal organization structures or your business as usual as you call it yeah okay so make it a project yeah absolutely <laughs> sounds good yeah sorry to have uh, have missed you on that uh, that last last question Zirkin, but thanks for for reminding me and jumping in um so we, we're rapidly running out of time guys uh, time flies when you're having fun certainly so um uh, we need to leave a little, little bit of time at the end to, to wash things up. So I think one question that, that can be genuinely directed at, uh, at all three of you um, is um, what are some of the qualities that a good Agile practitioner must have? Um, now, obviously, we need, need to understand that from a practical delivery, but also uh, academic perspective as well. So, yeah, Helen, do you want to start with, uh, with your thoughts on qualities of a good agile practitioner or even qualities of a bad agile practitioner, whichever, one, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, I think uh, there's all sorts of things come to mind. Um, one of the first thing I thought of was humility, actually, ah. um, in the sense that, um, you know, you, you, you may, any individual, one of, the thing, one of the things I think, I'll talk to about software for a minute, because that's the first thing that comes into my mind. When you've got a software team, 
Um, one of the things that you have to remember is that you don't know everything. As an individual, you don't know everything. Um, and within teams, sometimes um, you have to just accept the fact that somebody else is better than you at doing certain things. And I think that's actually very important. I mean, I went, one of the things I was saying at the beginning was to do with making the most of the experience and expertise you have in a team. Um, and so that's true of a project manager, it's true of other individuals in the team as well. So I think there's, Humanity possibly is not quite the right way of phrasing it, but it's recognizing that that you 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 um, recognizing your own faults and your own uh, strengths, um, and I think that's 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 important. Excellent, thank you, um, Adrian. Did you want to uh, take a, a response on that? I'm one? just going to say one word, really: adaptability. Okay. Um, I just just I'm just add a tiny bit behind that. In, in APM, it has the chartered status uh, and it's running in parallel is its predecessor, which is called Register Project Professionals. And I've been an assessor for that since pretty much since that started. And when I do the interviews uh, to see whether someone's met the RPP standard, the key thing myself and other assessors are looking for in these you know, people who are bound to be more experienced professionals is adaptability. And that for me is the mark of a great professional. And it's right at the heart it's built right through throughout um, agile and lean principles so I, that's that's the reason i say that word awesome and uh, finally yeah Sirkin, your your thoughts on qualities of a good yeah. practitioner it's an easy and a hard one to answer isn't it so <laughs> it is yes. um, i agree with what has been said already i think it's about in the end it doesn't matter if it's agile project management or any project management mm. i think we're talking about management capabilities here so um, uh, uh, as a project manager, you don't have to be a knowledge specialist, as Helen said, because um, you have other people who, who are knowledge specialists. That's why you put the, 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 the team together. So I think what, what you need to know a little bit about a lot of things, but you don't need to know a lot about one thing, uh, maybe. And the other thing is to, to make sure that um, you can be part uh, in the group and you can lead and be led. Uh, and I think that's one of the most important things. You know, you can go into any short course in the world you want, and you can um, uh, read the manual and, and remember the manual by heart, but it's not going to make you a good project manager. In the end of the day, people work with people. So, and, and that's what's important. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Very good. Great. Excellent. That kind of links us in nicely to the Slido question that's been going on. Um, behind the scenes uh, during the Q and A, and that what is ad, what agile is to you? Uh, and I was wondering with Rob, Robert, you could um, maybe show how that's uh, that's turning out. Um, so it looks like we've had significant um, responses. Under uh, 47, I see. So that's that's really great to to, to hear and see. Um, and crikey, lo and behold. Um, some of the words that you guys have just responded to has been included. So we're either, we're either right together or we're all very wrong together. But uh, no, it's uh, it's good to see that there's some consistency in, in 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 our approach. And hopefully, people that read that what's on the screen and have and have heard what uh, what what the, uh, the the panel have, have had to say have been able to have to take a, maybe a different view on it, or maybe take a, 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 have had their eyes opened. Perhaps they didn't realise that. Um, uh, there was an iterative approach to it or you need to be responsive or um uh, where else what else can we pick on here adaptability which is what one of one of the words i think adrian said um so if if anything that's uh that, that would be good for people to to, to to take a look at that and and have this as a sort of a, a mindset as to what you what you heard and what you talked about today it's a good good conclusion piece i feel oh, and there's still some some coming in now so really well advertised i think one additional thing, one final thing we want to we want to get from this is what the audience um, takes top takeaway would be from this uh, from this hour session. Not only to feed back into um, to, to the speakers, because uh, obviously you know the speakers clearly want to know uh, and want some re feedback and, and, and positive responses. The APM want to want also want to feedback what uh, what, what information. Um, and whether this has really hit the mark and touched the spot, um, but also, you know, what can we do for, for, for future um, webinars as well? So, what we would like to do and open um, open the slide up again is what would be your key top takeaway from this session? 
So uh, those um, listening in uh, and watching intently, uh, if you could answer that question, that would be most, most welcome. Thank you. Um, so for me, we've got um, what, four minutes, three minutes left. Um, Helen, Sirkin, Adrian, thank you very much. Um, if you have any final words you wish to to say, then then I think this is this is the time. So Helen, we'll start with yourself. And, um, I think agile is the future. So um, do do come on board and get involved with it. It's fun. It's great. <laughs> it's really it's Absolutely. much more exciting and interesting to work on any kind of project, whatever it is that you're doing, in an agile way than in a awesome. non-agile way. Believe me. <laughs> awesome. That's great. Thank you, Helen. Uh, second. I'm not sure. I think uh, let's, uh, as I said at the very end, that uh, you know, in terms of evolutionary development processes, let's learn from Mother Nature. <laughs> ah, okay, I like it. Okay, and uh, finally, from uh, from you, Adrian. Absolutely, learn from, learn from nature. The bumblebee certainly flies. Um, I think I think two things. I've got to pick up on the the, the on the on the word. Thing that came came up. Obviously, uh, the question, what is agile? It's inevitable that iterative is going to come up a lot. Uh, I can't keep on enough that iterative life cycles are not uh, what agile project management is about. That's a delivery life cycle. Uh, it can be any damn life cycle it needs it needs needs yeah. to be. But otherwise, I'm going to really echo uh, uh, Adam and Sirkin. Uh, agile, being agile is really, really exciting. It's much more fun. Uh, it, it helps create a culture in which teams can be, um, have much more fun together and just gel like mad uh, and just deliver like mad. It's, it's far better than, uh, well, <laughs> Trump. So there we go, which is the opposite of uh, being agile. There okay. we go. Politics, my God. I'm going to say before we get too deep into that, I think we should. I should step in there and uh, <laughs> divert it. But no, thanks. Uh, I mean, no, it keeps it relevant. You know, any reference to to local popular popular culture, I think, is 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 relevant. So because that's, that's it, it does reflect motivated. a cultural reality. That's the thing. Yes, absolutely right. No, absolutely right. No, perfect. Well, I think we're about done for time, guys. So um, thank you ever so much for 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 volunteering and stepping up and taking your time here. Um, on the screen here, we have a few more events coming up uh, that the APM is promoting, uh, and that can be uh, checked out from the APM website forward slash events. Uh, so yeah, lots going on through November, you can see there. Um, unfortunately, they're webinars and not face-to-faces, but I think you can uh, agree with me that um, although we've not had a chance to see your faces, the fact that we've been able to see um, the reactions uh, and the, you know, the three panel members uh, it really helps augment the responses to a question. Um, and I think um, this is perhaps the new norm. I hate to say, keep saying that word, but uh, it is. And I think this has worked really well. So again, heart, heartfelt thank you for, for Helen, Sirkham and Adrian to, for supporting this event and look forward to uh, to seeing you at, at future events in the, in, the, in the near future. So thanks again, everyone, for dialing in and uh, we'll no doubt see you on future webinars. Thank you. <laughs>